Listen, listen. Halloween is knocking at your heart. So, there I was, balls deep in a five-year-old. What the fuck, what the Corey? fuck, Corey? Jesus Christ. Holy shit. I asked you to come to a podcast, and this is what you decide to talk about? I thought this was one of those group sessions. No! No. Hi, no. my name is Corey, and no, I no, have no, no, a no, problem. No. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're not. <laughs> am I in the wrong place? Yeah. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Oh my this God. isn't Child Abusers Anonymous. No! No! Are you sure? No! You look like you would do something like no, that. What? No. It's the face. Oh, no, no. You no. do kind of have a, a oh, face. Okay. Like that. Um, well, I'm pretty sure that Jesse set me up. Yeah. So. Uh, all right, so this is uh, the final episode of the first round of the Tournament of Blood. My name is Jesse Bristeris. I am the host and panelist again this week. Uh, as people are still out sick and whatnot, uh, we have a couple people here. Obviously, you just heard Kian. Uh, and we have a special guest uh, from Lunch Money Radio, Corey Williamson. Yeah, buddy. Hello, my friend. Lunch Money Radio uh, will be featuring Jesse and I on our separate entity of the $10 million Burrito Podcast. Yes. With other Lunch awesome Money family. Radio Invading the Bro Bro Dojo. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little, uh, little uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Right like, um, right. We're in your territory. He's like, get the fuck out. <laughs> it's like, it's like, if, if, it's like if, like, if, hot, if it's, it's hot wherever they're going, it's just all sitting here with me. I'm like, yeah, I am outnumbered. Yeah, all of a sudden. <laughs> right? Well, Ken. Hello. A surprise for you. Right. Here's Rob Catlin. Right. It's like, oh, no, <laughs> As you walked in the door. Right it's like, now. hey. But my wife Cassie, oh fuck, I should go home. <laughs> uh, so like the funny thing, the funny thing about this is that like, um, for the most part we do like it is technically if you list if you if we did a video podcast, people would tag us as a minority as like a, a as a colored podcast because it's like two white dude, two two to three white dudes, and then the rest of people are either Asian or Mexican that are sitting with us talking. And they're like, oh, you guys are a colored podcast. I'm like. Mm-hmm. We're pop culture. Why? Why are you? Uh, that, that, I don't know why. Uh, yeah. and, and, and you know, I would uh, I would ask them uh, why are you um, using the term colored? Because <laughs> we can't use black podcast uh, because everyone's gonna look at us like we're black. Kind of fucking racist. Yeah. Wait, All wait, right. You're not black. Uh, I say I. No, that uh, explains your penis. Fair ooh, enough. Ooh, Moving on. The uh, Asian penis. Damn y'all. Yeah. All right. Anyways, uh, so here we are. We are about to go over the Haddonfield region. Haddonfield? Yes. Uh, the last episode, Corey, uh, you missed it. We had some upsets and whatnot. Uh, okay. we'll, go, we'll go over those so far. Uh, at the end of the episode, we will go over the second round matchups. Uh, but this last uh, episode... Uh, we had Michael Myers beat Alex DeLarge from A Clockwork Orange. Uh, he's okay. going to be facing Robert the Tire, who defeated Jaws. I'm still salty about All that. All right. <laughs> Can you explain that one to me? Uh, Robert, Robert the, tire, the Tire versus Jaws. So uh, what, Robert Jaws the tire, choked on the rubber? Robert the Tire is an uh, OP character. Right. He, he's, like, he's like if you cheated when rolling up a D&D character. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's like if I made like a halfling in D and D, and stats are just maxed. So how how did what happened? What exactly went? He has out? very destructive telekinesis that can just oh, blow up. Okay, a so he basically used that. I was thinking that John was thinking he was well, basically his day, yeah. Went through basically, the gone. way that this oh. match went down was that it ended up in the water. Because, <laughs> because okay, with, with low, imagine that with, with right. lower uh, the lower seed always gets the advantage. Uh, environment okay. advantage, sure. or advantage, and so you know it's just Robert the Tire floating in the ocean, and then Jaws comes up and uh-huh. fucking like eats him and tears him uh-huh. apart. Sure, but Robert the Tire also has this power where he can regenerate into a different thing. So it's like oh. Robert the Tire is now million or like thousands of little Robert the Tires. Sure, sure all... the pieces, but now just yes, because he's all he also has the hive mind ability. And then still has telekinesis, so basically he used that yeah. to yeah. blow up the shark. Yes, and Ken is oh. very salty. 
<laughs> as, salty, as salty as the ocean in which Jaws died. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, man. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, we also had Reagan Come McNeil. On, the the shark you? from Deep Blue Sea was better than Jaws. I'll fucking cut you. <laughs> Can you um, kill Sam L, but yeah. Also, in one of the most surprising upsets ever, Reagan McNeil beat the thing. <laughs> How? What? Uh, basically, Reagan McNeil is uh, uh, possessed by Pazuzu, okay. the demon. Uh-huh. The thing takes over somebody's body. Pazuzu will then take over the mind. Oh, snap. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Done. It was. Kian it was. Yeah, Kian came up mind. with that one too. So that was uh, crazy. This comes from a person who does do a lot of like um, scripting of things and write, yeah. writing things and fan theories and things like yeah. that. Where I have to think that because a lot of our other channels, like on our anime channel, we do fan theories. So like, I sit there and I model about like what Goku can and cannot do. And yeah, I'm like, well, I I know this. this. We don't need to talk yeah. about the back. Um, super <laughs> also, we had uh, Hannibal Lecter uh, defeat Carrie uh, by basically talking his way Psychosis. towards her. Uh, telekinesis, but uh, sure. basically talked his way towards her and then slit her throat. Yes. Nice. Uh, uh, see, I'm seeing Hannibal Lecter, the doctor, maybe, you know, getting into her head. Exactly. Just really fucking with her. Exactly. That Just makes sense. Psychosis. Yes. That makes sense. Don't tell him. Uh, Pinhead obliterated Negan from The Walking Dead. Good. Uh, yes. He is a fuck. Uh, Ghostface uh, easily defeated Annabelle. Uh, and Ghostface, the... Really? Yes. Ghostface, just a person and a mask, it takes on... Two people. We, you have Billy and Stu from okay, the first movie. Okay, Billy and Stu take on a, a possessed doll. That can't do shit. Doesn't do shit. It just possesses Chucky was people. a doll and he fucked shit up. Yeah, but, yeah, but I mean... Chucky, like, was a movable doll. This yes. Is, Annabelle is just a... Annabelle can't movie. move if she if you're looking at her. Plus, they're also, they're also okay. movie nerds, so they're like, this happened. We've seen oh, yeah. snap, you're right. Yep. They're, you're right. They're movie nerds. They're going to be uh, like, no, 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 we don't we know how to do this. Uh, okay, that's in, fair. In the most lackluster performance ever, uh, Samara Morgan uh, basically waited 100 years and just let the zombies die out. And oh. she, fa- she faced a pack of five zombies, and they're both undead, and the zombies couldn't kill her, and she can't, you know... Uh, kill off a thousand zombies sure, within sure. seven days. So yeah. Uh, so Samara Morgan just waited it out. And uh, Newsville, but okay. Yes. If, you know, if it, it's a way to win, that's a way yep. to win. And uh, um, the tall man defeated the mercenaries from your next. Which I knew was going to uh, happen. Yes. Okay. Uh, so that is what Fancy. happened. That is what happened uh, last episode. Thank also, don't see Jeepers Creepers, Creepers three. Yes, uh, we forgot to mention that. Don't uh, last episode. No, 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 hold on. Uh, uh, we forgot to mention that. That's our that's our weekly reminder for you guys to not go see Jeepers Creepers three in theaters. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't pirate know what, pirate the shit out of it so they don't pirate the shit out of it. If you want. <laughs> Do not that's pay fair. money to go see that fucking movie in theaters. That is uh, why this, is, this is your weekly reminder. Uh, and if you don't know why, such as Corey probably doesn't know why. Uh, the I don't director think they needed a sequel. No, 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 that's not the reason. Well, uh, the reason is that director Victor Salva is a convicted child molester. And, oh. well, we might as well bring it up. In the weekly news that I like to cite through, Victor Salva also tried to put a child molestation scene inside Jeepers Creepers. Yes, uh, I still have that up, you by the way. You know what, I think I read something about this right. through the Facebook. Yes. Well, <laughs> uh, so, uh, John, uh, John Squires, you can follow him at Freddy in Space on Twitter, uh, put out this... Uh, ag- or, uh, Leaked an excerpt that was cut from the script of Jeepers Creepers 3. Gotcha. I'm going to read this bullshit for you. Yeah, I think I heard about this. <clears throat> what the uh, character was based off. So, so, so this is the excer- excerpt that was cut. Addie is a brooding pool of sadness, presuming, presumably due to a combination of abject poverty and what can only be called tasteless, cursory allusions to a history of sexual abuse at the hands of her stepfather. Uh, in parentheses, one particularly odious character even goes so far as to remark, can you blame the stepdad, though? I mean, look at her. The heart wants what it wants. Am I right? Oh, what the fuck? That was cut from the script of the movie. Thank God. A convicted child molester just tried to put a child molestation scene in a fucking movie. That's that's pretty fucked. So yeah, don't go see Jeepers Creepers 3 in theaters. Wait till it comes out on Netflix or something. Amen. 
They still make but money. But apparently, revenue I'm at the wrong. I community. mean, but it's not going to be nearly as much. I know, but that's still, you know. So yeah, every click gives a buck. Jesse, you know you, that makes you a shithead. You read that off, but then what did I just? How <laughs> did I start the podcast with? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. Thank you. Uh, uh, really quickly, an update to the uh, leaderboard standings, and uh, who was it in first? Eli. Eli has taken the lead in our uh, tournament challenge. Uh, he is now in the lead with 19 correct picks. Uh, Kian has dropped down to second in a second place tie with Gil at 18. And Zach Paulson uh, and Lindsay are tied for third with 17. So Oh, that's Asian Zach. Oh, shit. <laughs> Asian I never Zach. knew Zach's last name. So, yeah, so I have no is... chance of... Uh... Anywhere, uh, yeah, I think you're in the middle of the pack right now, and anybody can still win. Uh, How many more episodes we got left? Uh, we have four more episodes now. Oh, after this, is this only the second of the? Uh, this is this is going to be the last uh, first round first round regional. Gotcha. So basically, we're going to go through the last of the first rounds. Sweet. Next episode will be the second round matchups. Sure. Uh, and then after that, the next episode after that will be the third round and quarterfinal matchups. And then we'll end it with the final four. We'll okay. determine our grand champion then. Awesome. Let's do it. Yes. All right. Oh. So let's go ahead and jump in. Did I send you the stats? No. The stuff? Okay. Uh, do I, do I we're going to... No, I'll, I'll bring it up on my laptop. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Give us one second because we weren't completely prepared as I thought we were. <laughs> you know, child molestation really kicked in. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> so, yeah. What are your I mean, I mean, otherwise? listen, do you, do you listen, think, guy, I, 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 I suppose we do need an explanation. Yeah, like, you fuck. We, uh, we, we joke a lot, but, Absolutely. I mean, in all seriousness, like, Victor Salva is a piece of shit. Right. So, After hearing uh, that, agreed. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. So, I mean, yeah, we made a joke about child molestation at the beginning of the at the beginning of the episode, but however, it, it, it's, it's not, not a, a fun. It's not a funny. It's not a funny thing, and I do apologize. It's a serious disease, and I'm seeing a therapist next week. Only kid. Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> God kid. damn you, Corey. Uh, no, I'm with you. Dude, though. this is uh, like you last episode when I'm trying to back you away from the from from the, the Babadook, Babadook. Yeah, no uh, argument. Well, just to clarify, I no one should do such a thing to a child. I, that's not right. And that, that's not tonight's subject, but if it was, I'm, I'm 100% against it. And for those that go to jail for it, I'm glad they do, prison, and they get raped. Mm-hmm. Because, though, no, that's yeah. it's extremely, extremely wrong. Yes. I do right. not. Oh, I don't, I'm just going to stop. It's just, it's, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, all right. Let's Gross. go ahead. Let's go ahead. Go ahead. Let's back away from up? that. And let's get into our first matchup of the Haddonfield region where we're going to see the number one seed, Jason Voorhees, take on the number 16 seed, Jack Torrance, uh, from The Shining. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and open it up to Kian first. All right, so, like I said with this, I'm going back to sportscaster, Kian. Now, you see with Jason Voorhees, God damn it. he is built like a machine, brah. Not only did, like, Jason also is an undead brain, but he also trained in the forest after he survived for the revenge kill of the said fucking campers. Jack Torrance is a crazy... Is, is Stephen King if he decided to want to kill his child and, yeah, child, child, his, uh, child and wife? And he's being talked to by ghosts to kill this. You look at Jason Voorhees' stats versus Jack Torrance, Jason Voorhees is a beast of a machine. Not only does he have the strength to kill Jack Torrance with his bare fucking hands... He can also use his iconic machete. Yeah. Not many people have been able to take down this mad titan down. Uh, look at uh, Friday the 13th Part 3. He comes back from the motherfucking lake and chokes out a bitch. All right, Corey. Follow that up. Sorry, let me recover from the sports casting. Oh, that was great. <laughs> comes out of the lake and chokes out a motherfucking bitch. Yeah. Uh, man, see, I, I don't disagree with what he, what Kian just said there. Uh, the, I think the biggest difference is the fact that Jason is an undead. 
he has been technically killed multiple times, but to just to be resurrected and come right back to life. Now, okay, uh, a, a quick rule, because I know you haven't heard the rules or anything. That is fair. Uh, We're based on uh, immortal, so. immortal characters such as, like, Jason sure. uh, are not immortal in this. Oh. They can be killed, but they're, that's why when you look on the stats, they have a high endurance. Ah, thank they you have for the highest the of rules, endurance. Because I'm basing this off of, like, thank you. Yes. That's fair. That's fair. King, could you uh, bring that over then? Let me see these yes. stats. Uh, scroll up if you would. That's a picture. No, I thought you had. No, I'm gonna yeah. scroll down. No. God damn it, you're killing the <laughs> Sorry, podcast. A little, little bit of technical difficulties. Oh, I, I was looking for the weight. Oh, and, uh, right, right, right. You oh. Should say, you should say that. Okay, so we got Jason 6'3", 250 pounds. Uh, he's got a kill count of 200. Jack is a questionable of two of of uh, kill counts. Excuse me, how many does he have? We don't know. He didn't kill anyone. Yeah. He killed, well, actually killed one person. Yeah, he killed one person in the hotel. Yeah, he kills so. only one in the hotel, his family. He tries to kill his family. He tried to kill his family of, what, his son and wife? Yeah. So he potentially had three kills, almost. But almost, one, one, but then he froze. Yeah, he, he messed yeah. up. Yep. He's only 5'8 and only weighs 175 pounds. Weapon is an axe. Uh, okay. Well, based off of that, I, I, I still got to give it to Jason. Yeah. Um, the machete, it's a lot bigger. It's a lot sturdier. Yes. He and Jason alone is just a much bulkier person, and uh, being as the fact that he's got over two hundred kills, I think he would it would require uh, 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 allow him to be a lot more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, precise, experienced, penis, epic, and a giant penis. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, um, all right, I, think, so Jason, I just think that Jack would be weak. So so this is this is the way this is the way that weak. this fight is going. Because I'm picking Jason also. Yeah, basically, I'm towards Jason. Basically, absolutely. of course, this is in uh, the hotel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's pretty much a very quick match, you know. Uh, uh, Jack is very aggressive when he goes crazy. And so he's pretty yep. much just going to walk up to Jason and try and hit him with the axe, and Jason's just going to fucking chop him up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. Jack's going to show up and, and stab him, and Jason's going to be like, huh, that tickles. <laughs> well, uh, let's just get yeah. rid of that and <laughs> slice dead, I win. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, the popular term, everybody has a puncher's chance. Uh, Jack <laughs> did not have a puncher's chance. No. Oh, God, no. Uh, all right, so... Uh, uh, Jason Voorhees is going to move on to the second round. He is going to face the winner of our next uh, matchup, which is the number eight seed, Mary Shaw from Dead Silence, going up against Kean's personal favorites. The number nine seed, Babadook. Y'all got to throw that shit at me every time. Yeah, I man. Uh, Babadook? Yes. That's the, the dog. No. no. You can't You're thinking Marmaluke. Oh. Marmaluke. That's Marmaduke, you fucking idiot. Marmaduke, what a Marmaluke. Yeah, that's what I said, Marmaduke. No, no we're talking Babadook. about the Babadook. Babadook. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not 100% um, familiar with these characters. But anyhow, yeah. let's hear it. Uh, okay, we'll just go ahead and start, buddy. Yo, let's just give the description. Mary Shaw, 5'11". Weight unknown. I don't know if it's because you're like, it's the joke, and they're like, women don't want to hear their no, weight. No, 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 no. I, I, legitimately, I, I legitimately couldn't find it. Like, I've said it, in, I've said it in previous episodes. I've put over 60 hours into getting all of this, uh, all of this uh, knowledge for these guys. Weapon of choice is fear. Strength. Haunting abilities, mind control, body control, weaknesses can only kill you if you scream against the Babadook, a shadow warrior. We don't know the height. We don't know the weight. Weapon of choice is manipulation. Strengths, possession, manipulation, various other supernatural abilities. Weakness, positive emotions. My dad. This is... (laughs) What... I, I didn't realize that this was going to be such the bullshit matchup that I thought it was going to be. Right. When I came up with these matchups and I saw that I had paired Mary Shaw and the Babadook, I immediately was like, oh, all right, it's just a win for the Babadook. But it's like, the Babadook is bullshit. Right. Like, as, as a villain, it's bullshit. It's like, oh, his weakness? 
Go away, Baba Duke. We love each other. And then the Baba Duke goes away. The fuck? You spent an hour and a half in that movie just for that? Mm-hmm. Fuck you. With this in mind, I I, I feel like in my in the log right, I give the <coughs> to Mary Shaw because the Baba Duke does shriek and shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, and Mary Shaw is is a positive person when she kills people. So shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I just killed somebody who wants cookies. Uh, oh, Mary Shaw, thanks. Uh, all right, so just since you've looked at all the stats and everything, who you've seen the picture since you don't know these two very well, uh, who would you give the edge to? So let me understand this though. She's a she's a she's a ghost she's, she's a, a ghost ventriloquist. Ghost ventriloquist. Yes. He's basically the Bulgarian boogeyman. The boogeyman. Right. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> but she can't kill you unless you scream. Yes. And he goes away if really you're just happy. Yeah. <laughs> this is a bullshit matchup. This is definitely a bullshit matchup. And and then I I just I wanna talk about this weight class. That is actually kinda of funny. <laughs> I'm Mary Shaw. I don't want to talk about weight. I'm a girl. No, that, that's that no, was that's great. exactly not uh, what it was about. I know, but it was just funny. You sexist pig. Uh so <laughs> So I'm gonna just go with Mary Shaw. All right. All the way. Uh, I mean, at least she's something that's there. Right. And I guarantee you 90, well, just to go with 99% of the time, someone's going to scream. Or maybe even 90% of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of screamers out there. You get something like this showing up. <laughs> she, dude, I will fucking scream. She comes around the corner with that face. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, I'm dead. And then she just cuts out your tongue. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, Mary Shaw for the win. All Absolutely. right, uh, I was going to pick the Babadook, but it doesn't matter. So, uh, Mary Shaw is going to go why, on this. Why were you going to pick the Babadook, though? Like, I, in, in my, like you, you might as well just give your counter. Uh, I believe that the Babadook could have won uh, based simply on, uh, I don't know if a shriek would count as a scream. So, yeah. I don't know, I, I think, think that I a shriek would count as a scream. I also but, I mean, you guys have picked Mary Shaw. Yeah. So Mary Shaw is moving on to the second round where she is going to face that silent, beautiful, sexy warrior Jason Voorhees. <laughs> yeah, either way, they both would have lost because Jason Voorhees is happy killing people. So. Yes. <laughs> All right. So with that, let's go ahead and just scroll on down to the next matchup. Uh, we have the number four seed, Pennywise the Clown. Versus the number 13 seed, Poltergeist. Uh, in what uh, uh, is a very even matchup between these two. So, uh, uh, when you look at the stats, they're all similar stats. Right. Uh, yeah. So, hey. I'll, I'll open it up to you two. When, when I look at it like this, is that um, Pennywise, Penny, to, to me... Um, I'm going to start with the positives of Poltergeist. He is a master of the manipulation. He has the, It has the possession power. It's able to reanimate corpses. It's shape-shifting. His weakness is love and magic spears. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and you look at his stats, though. His stat, They are evenly matched, but Pennywise's fear outweighs them. But it, uh, the uh, Poltergeist's weapon is, at, is four compared to three. But the fear is up there. The fear is that edge that, like, Pennywise, to me, is the... Hold on. I, I gotta make a... I'm, I am gonna make a... Uh, you phone in a friend? Phone in a friend! Phone in a friend! <laughs> phone in a friend! <laughs> okay. Uh, continue your thought, though. But when you when you look at it, like, when, when I look at it like this, and I see all those stats and things like that, my edge does go to Pennywise, because um, he has a lot more going for him. He has the ability to shapeshift. He has the ability to do all of that. And things like that. He has he has the same kind of powers as the Poltergeist, but they're amplified to me. He's able to use, he's able to create things that aren't there. Right. All right. So who are we calling? Max. Uh, Max answers the phone. Yeah. It's gonna be two two weeks in a row. You've uh, unsuccessfully I, called somebody. Yeah, unsuccessfully called someone. Uh, if you remember last I'm sorry, week. sorry, the person you were talking No? Yeah, there it is. So two for two. <laughs> two for two. I want to phone a friend. This is for the million well, dollar uh, question. No so, problem. Uh, fuck some, sorry, fuck he Max Cooley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the million dollar question, you're going to phone a friend. He did not pick up, I'm sorry, you'll lose. Yes, I am now poor. 
<laughs> uh, all right, Corey, uh, how do you see this going? That is definitely one hell of a toss up there. Um, and you don't have to go just off this. Well, I'm, I'm looking at the stats and just and, and just trying to compare the two. So you have possession of a weapon and you got fear. Fear. Um, I think you're calling him again. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, your pocket down, bro. Oh, no. I don't know. That That's definitely something. The thing about Pennywise is that he only returns every 27 years. 27 years. And then how long is he around for, though, during the, f- the first return? Uh, I, I'm not sure. It's, it's not very long. No. And the only time that he will kill or can kill is if the child is weak-minded and uh, lets the fear consume Man, him. Man, you're going to the, the poltergeist house, though. The well, hold on, hold on. Let, let, me, let me continue. What I'm, what I'm getting at is that that is when the kill happens is because the child was considerably weak. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. We got, we got Max calling. Oh. Hello? And we don't have Max calling. Just All kidding. Right, continue your thought. Just kidding. Uh, so you get a bunch of kids that go, no, no, screw this. I'm not dying. I'm not going to be afraid of you. I mean, it takes a lot because this Pennywise, I mean, they really got into those kids' head. But if they can brave up and defeat them, move forward, no kill. Poltergeist? Uh, it, it's it's something that's just always it's it's a ghost. It's something that's there. It doesn't just show up every twenty seven years. It's always there. But but, be, we're, but we're talking about a fight between these two. Well, I realize that. I mean, I mean, right now but, we're in we're in the house of the movie. Uh, which movie? It the poltergeist. the poltergeist. We're in the house of yes. the poltergeist. Yes, we are in the beautiful Penny- sunny California for this. Pennywise doesn't just kill children; he kills anyone who's afraid. And poltergeist, but says, he does he does target children. Yeah, he mainly he targets. Does. Children. He mainly targets. Poltergeist poltergeist targets, adults. targets everything. He does kill adults. Like that. I mean, that's what I want to point out. That's a major factor here. Yeah. is that he gets stronger with fear. And if poltergeist poltergeist doesn't get stronger with fear, no. Pennywise is in a house with four people who are afraid of this ghost. He's going to feed off that, yeah. which gives him the edge, in my opinion. Yeah. He's edging out just by that. Yeah. I See, I, I personally have to go with Pennywise also. Um, it's not like I'm outvoted because I was almost leaning towards the poltergeist. I mean, I feel like the yeah. poltergeist can just trap Pennywise inside the house. Right. You know, I mean, use the house against Pennywise. Right. And be like, you are now a part of me, and ha ha, you're not leaving. To point out Pennywise, though, Pennywise is, in fact, a... Uh, is it is, is actually not, in the novel it's actually an ancient, ancient alien, alien and that isn't even that's true Pe- pennywise the clown isn't even his physical form it's an illusion right right it's an illusion that can touch and kill that's people. fair yes that's fair uh well i was leaning towards the poltergeist anyhow it was a long debate turns out pennywise no probably. listen no, like no, no. That, that's what this is all about man. you're it's able to date. you're able to persuade people yes. to your opinion uh, I, I was just it's, uh, it was because i, I, I remember i remember the almost like 20 minute debate that we had between frankenstein and uh the firefly clan i got people to vote for blackula yeah <laughs> all right it's, uh, I, that's I don't how know good just... the, these debating has worked all right so anyways pennywise the clown moves on to the second round uh he is going to face He's going to face the winner of our next matchup, which pits the number five seed Chucky versus the number 12 seed Manson family. Uh, this is a very, very interesting matchup uh, as you have a killer doll versus a very charismatic leader in Charles Manson and his most faithful of followers. Really, with Leslie, Susan, and Tex. So, mm-hmm. man, the man, like, mm-hmm. all right, I'm going to point it out like this. Yes, Chucky is a scary doll that murders people with nail guns and knives and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But again, Manson ain't afraid to lose numbers. <coughs> that is ain't... true. But the, the, the thing that most people don't know about Charles Manson, uh, and it'll, it'll come in to hinder him in fights in this tournament, is that... They stumbled into the murder business. Right. Like, they were all about drugs and stuff like that. And right. they had a drug deal that went wrong. And Charles was like, well, fuck, I don't see any other option but to just kill him. And so he sent Leslie and Susan to go kill him. And then you had the famous murders. I can't remember the name of the lady that they murdered. 
If she was like a famous actress or whatever. Would like Dahlia murder? No, 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 no. Um, but, uh, you know, so like they stumbled into the murder business and they weren't very good. They were terrible at cleaning up after themselves. Right. To cover their tracks. But you're talking fight to the death, though. Yes. I mean, <clears throat> yeah, like, you know, cleaning up after yourself, like that, that means nothing in this fight. But we're talking about basic, like, in my opinion, we're talking about Chucky, who's a fucking killer doll. Versus basically uh, uh, the two buffoons from Home Alone. <laughs> who suck at killing. Where, that's the oh Manson family God. in a nutshell. They were terrible. Right. <clears throat> Talk about like one of the best comparisons. The, Chucky versus the two idiots. The, the, that, one thing that Manson, the one thing that the Manson family does have going for them that's is legit. Charles Manson. Right. I mean, yeah, he's just about as tall as Chucky. But, you know. Uh, right. Because uh, Manson's only 5'2. Yeah, he's fucking a midget. <laughs> um, but, it, yeah, like. I don't like being called midget. So, so we're talking about, like, could Manson just pretty much convince Chucky to join the Manson family? He's like, dude, I get you. You Boom. like murdering. I like murdering. We yeah. Could, we could do this together. Yeah. So I mean that that's the question. That's how that's how the Manson family wins this match. Right. Otherwise Chucky's just gonna divide and fucking conquer these bitches. Oh yeah. No, so. I still think the Manson has the upper hand though. Like Kay. you lose bodies but you still have Charles Manson. Well he only has the three bodies. Right. You know what I mean? He can lose one of them. And to be fair, Charles Manson I only, I think he only killed one person during that murder spree. Right. So, like, Leslie, Susan, and Tex did most of the killing right. oh, during that quarter uh, killing spree. It's so. a cult, and, and when you're told, to, you know, you, he's the leader, and you worship this freaking guy, for God's sakes, the, the guy tells you to jump, you're like, all right. Yeah. You want me Chucky to jump out the window? manipulated, though, too, at the same time. I would, you I would mean, have said pussy. it. Right. That's about it. <laughs> if Manson found, yeah, if Manson found a, a chick with some huge-ass no, tits. He could, use, he could use them to their advantage to yeah. seduce Chucky, like, oh, ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was a horny, <laughs> horny little fuck. So, so the question is, uh, the question I asked to you guys, does Manson get Chucky to come over to his side? I truly think, Jesse, you made a very valid point that, yeah, I think that that was something I was going to base it off of, is because, yeah, he would. Maybe not at first. Maybe Manson is going to lose a couple people, and he's going to have to recruit more people and convince them, join me, I'm really freaking awesome, we're going to do a bunch of drugs, you might kill somebody, no big deal. But he's going to have to build an army first. And then send them after Chucky. Well, no, see, see, yeah, but I mean, like, that, that's not part of this. Like it's oh, literally, well, it's kind of literally history. just these four people. Oh, you're not going to say Chucky. that. You're not going to yeah, allow can, he, Manson to get a bunch of people to go after Chuck. No. Exactly. Not at all. No. No. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, fine. And plus, and plus, Manson Manson's cult was just a bunch of fucking druggies. That's all True. it was. Was a bunch of like True. heroin and ecstasy uh, acid users. Tex. Tex, the whole the whole reason why Tex is even in this is because he hung out with Charles Manson one day and then took entirely way too much fucking acid. <laughs> right. He took right. like triple the amount you should okay. like yeah. healthily take. Yeah. And yeah. it fried his brain. Right. Right. So yeah. Okay, so if you're not allowing me to stretch out, because I think that's what Manson. No, and, and 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 that's why I go back. Uh, it's just like, the there's the four. Yes. Just the four, and Chucky. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, what a deal you got there. You, I mean, I mean, when song. you look at it, that that's why I bring it up. It's like, in reality, the only way Charles Manson and the Manson family win this match is if Charles Manson can convince Chucky to come over to the Manson family. That that's, I can't disagree with that. I, I so, logically that makes the most sense. Uh, that, that's what he would have to do. However. Could he convince Chucky fast enough? Chucky is just a messed up, psychotic little doll thing that no matter how many times he was torn up or, th- or burnt, he was able to, boom, yeah. he's a spirit. Voodoo his way back. He could take his spirit and put it into a different entity. Yeah. Or a blonde with huge chits says, Chucky, you're so hot, I'm going to bring you back to life. Yeah. So... 
as much as Manson might try to convince Chucky to join them, Chucky, I don't. I personally feel ain't gonna ain't gonna be for it. He wants all the power. If if Manson's gonna get Chucky, then Chucky's gonna say, "Oh, fine. Tell you what, I'm the leader now." Yeah. And personally, I don't think that's gonna go over very well. I vote Chucky. Okay. I believe that they're taking copious amounts of drugs. They think that the, they they're not gonna freak out about a killer doll. And um, I feel I I still get the. Do you though? Yeah. Or they do. Sure. Like, 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 let's say you are fucking jacked up on acid. Right, yeah. So I will take yeah, that as another know. thing. Yeah. They're not. They're. They. They will try to be killing him, and it. It. It could be a four against one. And I'm sorry. I feel. I still feel like the Manson family might have the edge just because of that. Oh shit! There's a doll. Oh, get away! Get away! Um. Doll small. So you're going wait. with Chucky. I'm going with the Manson family. He's going with oh, the Manson, Manson family. family. You're going I with just, Chucky. I just feel the doll is small and quick. He's gonna. You're, twa- you're, you're tweaking out on drugs. Where the fuck is he? Where is he? Where did he go? My Boom, sneaks up behind you, dead. See, my, my, you two are bringing up two different scenarios. Um, at, the way I would see it playing out is that you since, I, since I'm pretty much the tiebreaker right now. Jesse, is, Jesse. you choose Tucky, y'all. Yeah? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, uh, before that came about... <laughs> Just a little persuasion. Uh, so anyways, uh, the way I would see it playing out is kind of the way that uh, 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 Corey mentioned, or that I kind of mentioned to him, and then he ran with it. Uh, you know, I, I think that Charles Manson could potentially get Chucky to join his side, and then it becomes can can Charles Manson kind of convince Chucky to stay with him long enough to where they just put him in a fucking room. And just forget about it. To where Chucky can't fucking get away and just eventually just fucking, you know. I think he's smarter than that. Who, Chucky? Chucky. Chucky's definitely smarter than that. He, he had I don't a think life. He is. No, he had a life before all. Oh, this. no, I, I could definitely see him going with, like, his route. Right. Where it's like, oh, all right, you want me to join the Manta family? Guess what? You know, just kill fucking Charles Manson. And it's like, guess what? Y'all are mine now. Yeah, I th- yeah I don't really think that Chucky is, is is stupid enough to fall for some of the shit that a bunch of drugged out whatever yeah. and that are gonna I, try to do. Honestly, yeah, I have to go with Chucky on this one. Okay, also. yeah, oh, that's a, yeah. Uh, it's, 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 this is a, he's well, a yeah. smart man and got a woman to fall in love with him, God. and hence that woman also goes, "I want to be a doll." What was that, kid? I fucking love the next picture. Oh yeah! Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't do it! Don't do it yet! Don't don't don't! You're don't dead. dead. Be here dead. Uh, all right, so that's great. Uh, with that being said, Chucky uh, officially takes over the Manson family. Uh, he's not gonna get he's not gonna get Leslie Susan and Texan in the next round, but I mean he he took over the Manson family. Boom! There it is. Uh, yeah. All right, so with that, let's find out. Oh, so Chucky. Uh, is now on a uh, collision course with fucking Pennywise the Clown in the next round. <laughs> that's that's gonna awesome. Be a, it's going to be an interesting match. Oh, my matchup. God, that's great. That's great. All right, so uh, our next matchup features the number two seed Zodiac Killer. Ted Cruz. <laughs> yeah, I was like, really? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Zodiac Killer on a Caterpillar. Yeah. Uh, the number two seed Zodiac Killer uh, versus the number 15 seed Angela Baker. I can't fucking take it, though. He's lost it. Ted fucking Cruz. Yeah, Ted Cruz. They are laughing. Uh, That's great. uh, I'll uh, I'll, uh, take a picture and I will post it to the Real Bro uh, Facebook page real quick. But in my notes, uh, I have pictures for these guys to help him. And uh, the picture of the Zodiac Killer is none other than former presidential candidate Ted Cruz. Is there an actual photo of the Zodiac? No. no. There isn't, is there? I didn't think no, so. that, is the, that is the number one reason why he is a number two seed in this. Sure. Nobody has ever figured out who the Zodiac Killer is. And then, of course, there's copycats. There's uh, always copycats. I mean, I mean, yes, cop- no. yeah. I mean, there were copycat killers after the Zodiac Killer sure. in the San Francisco area. Sure. But it's like, there's only one fucking Zodiac Killer. Yeah, he was... Brilliant. Uh, yes. Still in the end, though, Angela Baker. Have you ever I seen the movie Sleepaway Camp? 
That's why. No, I no. Okay. Do you remember the ending? Do you remember? <coughs> it's a famous ending. Everybody knows the ending to the movie. Where, like, she's finally killed and everything. And she just happens to, like, be naked, I think. When she's yeah, she killed. has a dick. It's a dick. And it turns out that it's actually a boy that got, like, molested and was thought to be killed at the camp the previous year. So, yeah. So, uh, That is some twisted shit. Yes. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we have uh, the Zodiac Killer at the camp, at Sleepaway Camp, uh, with Angela Baker. Uh, do you guys see Angela winning this at all? I don't. What was her deal? She just went uh, psycho it was, and started it was killing. He, things? Kind of, yeah. He? What is he? What is its deal? Let's just do. Let's just go with that. No, yes. don't, let's let's not use let's not use that pronoun. No, is that the wrong pronoun? <laughs> let's not use that pronoun. Well, let's not. No. Okay, so identifies as a he. Uh, I as a matter of fact, I believe that uh, he was just dressing up as a woman to get into the camp to start killing people. Okay, so he just went psycho. Just decided I'm gonna I want to kill. Yes, people. he was almost killed at the camp. Comes back, starts killing people. Hmm. Uh, but we're also talking about the fucking Zodiac Killer here. The Zodiac Killer was intelligent. Yes. The way he did things was just out of your mind. It yeah. blows you away. I. Yeah. With that being said, I like I, I want to debate more, and I will. Uh, I want to hear everyone else's opinion. But personally, right now, I am totally for the Zodiac Killer. Oh, so am I. It's what he. It's how he did it, and, and the way he got into everybody else's head, or they're just like. And, 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 and it's kind of the Zodiac Killer dominates this match for Easily. me personally Easily. just because of one thing and that's nobody knows who he is yep right. he could literally be anybody yep. and we're at a fucking camp oh yeah like we're with fucking teenagers and adults here he could be anybody in this fucking oh camp. yeah he could be Angela Baker oh <laughs> he could be and really, the Zodiac Killer... Confirmed, Angela, Angela Baker, Baker actually the Zodiac one. Killer. There you go. Dude. Uh, so. Uh, Anyhow, no, Zodiac Killer all the way. Yeah. It's, just, it's just his intelligence. Dude, I'm going, I'm going with Ted Cruz, my boy. Yeah. <laughs> right? All Ted right. Cruz. So, Ted Cruz moves on to the second round. That was too easy. Yeah, that was that was great. Yes. Thank you for that one. That was, that was awesome. Uh, and guys, we only have three matchups left. Corey, how are you enjoying your first time at the Tournament of Blood, buddy? Love it. This yeah. is great. Good. This is great. Good. Ken, how do you think this is going so far? It's going pretty good. Um, minus everyone probably thinking I hate gay people now because the Bobby. <laughs> uh, well, no, hey, what's worse? You hating gay people or them thinking I'm a child molester? Because it's me, it's worse. Huh? I kind of led you both into this. Yeah, story. you did. Yeah, yeah you um, did, you fucker. Like, and then we try to get, let people have the time where Jesse hates short people because he keeps saying the word midget. But that's and I feel people. horrible. Is swearing even allowed in this podcast? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Awesome, thank you for that, the, the correct response. I just want to make sure that I'm not, like, out of turn. All right. Uh, the entire so show let's... is just bleep, 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 right. bleep. No. Uh, I... All right. Sorry, what was that? Can you... No, it, you're fine. You can say fine. Uh, well, thanks. All right, so let's get into our next <laughs> matchup. Let's find out who is going to face the Zodiac Killer. And that Chris is Dave. the number seven uh, seated fisherman from I, know what, from I Know What You Did Last Summer. Uh, facing the number 10 seed, Christine the Car. And the new title, I Knew Who You Ran Over Last Summer. Uh, so let's go over some of these stats real quick. Uh, you know, the Fisherman, 6'1", 220 pounds. Weapon of choice is a meat hook. Uh, racked up 20-plus kills. Uh, his strengths include high endurance, uh, a serial killer instinct, and physical strength. And his weaknesses kind of... He's mortal. He has no powers. Jesus. And he's one-handed. Uh, whereas <laughs> Christine the car, uh, we don't know the weight, we don't know the height. Uh, weapon of choice, oh, I mean, it's a car. fucking car. Uh, Rack up 10 plus way. kills. Uh, strengths, uh, regeneration, and it's a goddamn car. Uh, with the weaknesses being it's not very good in tight corners, and it's a fucking Chrysler. <laughs> so... <laughs> With his weakness, if there's a tight corner coming up, I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, I do, I do make jokes about tight corners uh, and everything, but that is one of my earliest and favorite horror movie 
uh, scenes is in the movie Christine when uh, Christine the car traps the one guy in the dead end. And, like, the dead end keeps, keeps getting, like, smaller and smaller. Yeah. So, like, it's, like, the car's literally killing itself to get to the guy. Right. And it's so amazing. Uh, all right. Oh. So, get at it, folks. It's a fucking car. It's a fucking car. He got hit by a car and survived. That's the goddamn irony. Thank you, Kian. Yeah. I was just going to say that. He got hit by a car and survived. <laughs> the irony is too much. Uh, Gets ran the fuck over, walks away, continues to kill you. Like, Christine's stats are way higher on the speed, strength, and weapon power. And endurance. Well, the thing with endurance is that uh, Christine is actually one of those immortal characters. Right. Like, Christine can't die. Right. Like, at the end of the movie, like, Christine was put into a fucking uh, car Car smasher. Yeah. And, like, at the end of the movie, it's a fucking brick, and you just see it start mending Uncrumbling itself. Uncrumbling and becoming so, whole again. Uh, but, I mean, like, in, the, in, you know, this, you know, like, God power is out. Right. So. Scenario is he could, like, lure her into, like, one of those tight corners or whatever. And the other scenario is he could move out of the way in front of a brick wall. So. I mean, yeah. So like, you're, you're taking away the power for the car to rebuild itself. Yes. Uh, I mean, eventually, like you know, it, it'd be able to do it like a few times. Right. But like, it, it's okay, kind of so like a power set. limited use. Yes. Not all the time. Yes. That's I still personally have to give it to Christine. Uh, it, it's just like a personal pick for me. Right. I love Christine. Um, That's fair. Christine was a great movie. I yes. haven't seen it in a long time. But uh, I, I again, do enjoy it. He's a fucking human, and she <laughs> is a car. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's been ran over and just said, meh. However, he does get killed in the end. Yeah. And then the f- next family member in line takes over. Right. Uh, so you just continually have a family member until the family member dies out. And the car says, beep, beep, I'm a Jeep. I mean, a <laughs> beep, beep, I'm a beep, Jeep. Beep, 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 I'm a Jeep. I'm a Jeep, Christ. Wow. Just All kidding. right. I'm also uh, giving it to Christine. Man, yeah, I'm going to give it to Christine, too. I mean, All right. Humans get ran over enough time, they die in the story. So uh, think about this matchup that we now have. We have Christine the car <laughs> versus the Zodiac Killer. I have no idea how that one's going to play wow. out. But that's going to be a hell of a fucking match. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> that is beep, something. beep, I'm a Jeep beep, indeed. Beep, beep, I'm a Jeep. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get uh, these last two matchups out of the way. Uh, our last two matchups include the number three seed Dracula versus number 14 seed Ted Bundy. Uh, but not the shoe salesman. No. That's Al Bundy. God damn it, it's Al Bundy. I knew that. Ted Bundy, if you don't know. His cousin? No. Was a <laughs> real life serial killer who uh, went on two different killing sprees. One in Florida, one in Washington. And he was known to kill sorority girls and Ooh. kind of uh, have sex with them too. Oh. So, yeah. Another fun fact. Someone had a killer penis. Yeah, I also got him and Jeffrey Dahmer mixed up. So, so in our first episode, yeah. oh, everyone was, agree- everyone was agreeing with Jesse when I was like, "You're wrong." Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Me, I got done with my explanation about Dahmer, which was about Bundy, and Kean's like, "Dude, you're talking about Bundy right now." It's like, "Oh fuck, I am, ain't I?" So, so no, you, he so, argued with me so. for a good. Good minute about no. it. No! Yeah. Jesse. You, Max, John were like, yeah, you're right. And B's like, question. you have it on there that he ate people. Yeah. I'm curious, after your debate with Dahmer, did you feel dumber? Shut Dumb, up. Dumb, dumb, dumber? Shut up. Yeah? Little? Shut up. All right. You're terrible. You're terrible at jokes. God, you are Gil. Dad jokes, number you're one. The, the equivalent to Gil. Who, me? No, him. Oh, I know, right? I He's going to be the Gil of your great. podcast. I thought it was uh, great. Moving I think forward. we're both going to be in the Guild of Our podcast. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you don't know. Oh, my God. The thing so, uh, pretty much, does Bundy stand a chance against Dracula? No, dude. Fucking Dracula. 
Yeah. Dracula, yeah, I mean, what's, let's say Bundy, if he stood any chance at all, it's because he's related to Van Helsink or some shit. And he knows I mean, I mean, like, Bund, Bundy would know, because, like, the story of Dracula is fucking oh, hundreds thousands, of years old. hundreds of thousands. He would yeah. know how to beat Dracula. He would know how, The absolutely. thing is, I don't think that he would be capable of landing <clears throat> those shots that needed to be shot. No. So. No. Dracula is so damn quick, he can just... Boom, I, I, I honestly think that it would be a closer matchup than most people would think, but I still think that Dracula would win in the That's end. fair, sure. That's that's totally fair, but no, it, that's not much of a debate, debate there. Dracula is definitely the win. Yes. Uh, Ken, you in agreement? Dracula. 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 Sorry. In the back of my Dracula. Dracula. <laughs> yeah, that fucking song was in the Matrix <coughs> too, and I just remember when we were drunk watching it. Yeah. All right. So let's get into the final matchup, which might be the most interesting matchup of the night. Uh, we have. Hold on one second. There we go. Uh, we have the number six seed Isaac and Malachi from Children of the Corn versus the Wolfman, a number eleven seed. Uh, the Wolfman comes in at 11 seed, kind of because it's kind of one of those classic characters that, you know, was dominated by Dracula and Frankenstein, whereas people like the Wolfman and the Mummy didn't get that much attention. So, yeah. yeah. You've got many different stories of Wolfman, though, different versions. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, one, you get kind of a weak guy, yeah. and then in others you get, holy shit, this look at, dude, look, Yeah, you, know, you talk about that. Count Chocolate and Dragonberry uh, are still still going at it, but where's Fruit Brute? Yeah. Where's my goddamn Fruit Brute? Was that Del Toro in the, in the most recent? Yeah. Yes. And and that version with uh, also Anthony Hopkins, dude, yeah. that Wolfman was fucking badass. Yes. So, um, that and, was like Wolf Hulk. And with <laughs> I, yeah. And with Isaac mm-hmm. and Malachi, it all relies on if they can summon up He Who Walks Behind the Rose. Sure. That their entire attack relies on that, because otherwise it's just two kids with a fucking sickle. So, it's not made it's, out of silver, is it? No. no. I'm sorry, this, this it's wolf. But the <laughs> reason I am going with Isaac and Malachi is because I think that they uh, they would be able to kind of keep the Wolfman at bay long enough for the fucking full moon to pass. Because we only get the Wolfman for one night. Interesting. And I, I think that Isaac and Malachi could keep the Wolfman at bay for the better part of the night. I don't think so, though. No? Um, I'm looking at this in, as you're fighting a wolf mm. who is an apex predator. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a master hunter. Yeah. Who is mm-hmm. who has tracking? Who has they? They're not their kids. They don't know like to cover their like you know. There's right. sense and things like that. Like you, well, you, you, they you weren't were stupid kids, though, were they? How old were they? How old were they? They were... Uh, 13 and 15? Okay, yes. so they're 13 and 15. They're obviously already... They're aware of, huh, of the Wolfman. The, the, the thing is... Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt you. No, no, go ahead. Like, I need to get this off my chest before Absolutely. I forget the thought. Uh, I, I, I still believe that well, it only takes, like, a couple minutes to do the summoning needed. Right. To bring out the demon. And so if Malachi can hold the Wolfman off for like a couple minutes, then it turns into a whole new fucking fight. Right. Because the he who walks behind the rose is kind of one of the more OP characters that we have in this tournament. Right. But it, it all depends on if it's feeling up to the fight or not. Right. So, because, I mean, they, they do numerous summons during the Children of the Corn, but we only see them once. Right. So, I, I guess I would think that at first the Wolfman might be surprised, and that uh, Isaac and Malachi would maybe have the higher ground for just a second. But I, I still don't like. I still like. I'm just on the wiki and the he walks among the road. It, it, it's it. It is very like, you know, you don't know when he's gonna come up. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I still give it. I still give it to the Wolfman. Yeah. All right. Uh, Corey. 
I, I that's where I was heading towards is, is the Wolfman. It, mm-hmm. It's it's the fact that once he's in that state, he's taken on all the senses. Okay. I think he would be able to you know s- you know smell it or sense it or, or something. Right. Like a, a spider sense, so to speak, with Spider uh, Spider Man. Right. You know, I I think it's a wolf. They got great instincts mm-hmm. when it comes to you know uh, hunting and and getting their kill. If that's what it comes down to. All right. Well, the Wolfman uh, picks up the victory, and we now have. The oldest rivalry in all of horror in the second round. Dracula as we Dracula. have Vampire versus Werewolf. As Dracula faces the Wolfman. Hell I'm yes. I'm super excited for this. Hell this is yes. going to be amazing. Uh, that is and exactly I might have to put in a little bit extra research for this. Yeah. Right? We, Just we, for that match. We definitely need a power panel for this. I, yes. I really want a power panel for this. The one. Wolfman actually is Van Helsing. And ta-da, he takes out Dracula. By the way, fuck Van Helsing. <laughs> <laughs> like the the, the uh, Hugh Jackman movie? No, just Van Helsing in Why? general. Why? Like, he's, I mean, he's just, uh, Van Helsing you know. really was, like, created after the whole horror movie thing. Right. Yep. And I feel like he was created after the whole, like, Dracula and, you know, the Wolfman and stuff like that. Well, because... They- because of like people like kids being so fucking scared. Yeah. All of a sudden, fuck. We need a we need a white oh, knight. They, they need yeah. They they needed a hero. Yeah. yeah. We had a bunch of vil- uh, villainous monsters that yeah. You're right. Kids became scared of. I I was scared shitless of Dracula. Mm-hmm. You know. You're and, and at night you're thinking, mom's that a bat? Oh fuck me. Right. It's gonna sneak in and, and now I'm a vampire. You know. Right. I was definitely scared of that. Shit. All right. So what are things you are afraid I, of then, Corey? Like in all honesty, we've had this conversation with everyone else. Well, we'll get there. Let me finish my thought here. Right. <laughs> so, but, uh, but you, so yeah, and, and then you get the you know, wolf man, you get mummy, you get the swamp thing, and you know you get all these other uh, uh, creatures out there, and you know, you just get scared shitless. Mm-hmm. So obviously they needed a hero, and we get right. Van, Van Helsing, and I think that was great. You know, you get someone to look up to, and then of course Hugh Jackman plays them later on in a film. Okay. Awesome, it's Hugh Jackman. It's kind of a shit movie. <laughs> no, that one was not his best film by any means. No. I uh, agree. So, but, what uh, you're telling me is that you were scared of bats. Is that why you're such a bat man? Yeah, well, yeah. Not entirely scared of bats. No? But, uh, you know, as a kid, you watch Dracula or any of those films, except for, uh, well, there's, that, there's a comedian one, that, just a spoof. What the yeah. hell is that called? Oh, oh, I remember what you're talking about. I can't remember, though. That one with Leslie Nielsen. Yeah. yeah. It's, well, anyhow. Anyways, all right, so. Oh, what am I afraid of? Yeah. Is that the actual? Yeah. yeah. I am scared shitless of spiders. Okay. All right. You give me a daddy long leg, I'll smash it. Big deal. You give me something bigger than that, I will freeze. Like, I was, when I was living in the, the, the Dragentagon, I came home one day, and there were two spiders that had decent-sized bodies on the wall. And I said, oh, I got this. I'm just going to grab a phone book, and I'm just going to smash right into it. I walk into my bedroom where they both of them were sitting there on the wall, and I like, phone book in the hand, ready to kill, and I couldn't do it. I was thinking, what if the spiders jump and attack my face? What if something happened, they bite me? Fuck this. I, I panicked. I ran downstairs and got the maintenance guy. <laughs> so I swear to God, and call me a pussy if you will, but I have spiders. I just, I can't. I can't be spiders. Dude, don't worry, man. I'm scared of dolls. I hate that shit. You're scared of what? I'm scared of dolls. I'm scared of clowns. Yeah. Dolls, clowns. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. All but, right. So yeah. that uh, that uh, ends it for the first round. Let's go over the second round matchups that are going to be coming to you next week. Uh, and we're going to be doing all of these matchups, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll have the number one seed, Jason Voorhees versus Mary Shaw. Uh, can Jason uh, continue his reign of dominance? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. I think I it's safe to I don't see why not. Uh, He's not going to talk. He's not going to scream. And Jason or Mary will face the winner of the Pennywise the Clown versus Chucky matchup. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> that's in just, other matchups, great. we have the Zodiac Killer versus Christine the Car, Dracula versus the Wolfman. The Xenomorph is going to be facing Willard and the Rats. Uh, Pluto will be facing two Graboids. Uh, Leatherface will be taking on Blackula. Jack the Ripper will be taking on Sam for tri- from Trick or Treat. 
Uh, Freddy Krueger, the other number one seed. Uh, well, not the other one. I mean, the Xenomorph, of course, we just went over. But Freddy Krueger will be facing probably his toughest test as he takes on Frankenstein's monster. Uh, Ooh. Yes. Uh, nice. Uh, the rage-infected uh, zombies from 28 Days Later will be taking on the Headless Horseman. Huh. Uh, Predator, also looking to continue his uh, number two seed dominance, going to be taking on Nosferatu's Count Orlock. Uh, then we have the Creeper versus the Puppet Master puppets. Ooh. Yes, that's going to be an interesting matchup. Uh, Michael Myers, the final number one seed. Uh, maybe upset bound as he faces Robert the Tire. <laughs> I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> Uh, Reagan McNeil, uh, in, in what is going to be the greatest, uh, we talked about this last episode. This is going to be the greatest shit talking versus psychology, uh, uh, fight ever because you have Reagan McNeil who's possessed by Pazuzu, who all he does is talk shit against Hannibal Lecter. Ooh. We're going to have the greatest war words in that one. Oh my goodness. Yes. Uh, Yes, uh, Pinhead, the uh, odds-on fan favorite, uh, looking to uh, take out Ghostface, Billy, and Stu. Uh, and Samara, Samara Morgan uh, will be taking on the Tall Man. And that is your second-round matchups. Do we have any questions at all? No. No? All right. Kian, where can they find you at? You can find me at the Roche Ambrose Podcast Network on Facebook, Podbean, and YouTube. Check out our great shows. Awesome. Yeah. Sorry, check out our great shows, such as the well-awaited D&D Adventures of the Idiot Heroes on BroQuest. Also, check out our Robro News, where we talk pop culture news. Check out Jay's Science Fiction Affliction, where he talks about science fiction stuff. Max and I do a fanimate thing, where we do fan theories and talk about different animes. As well as Let the Fans <laughs> Talk, Ryan Freeman Sports Podcast about football and other sports. The Takedown Breakdown with me, Luis De Luna, and Jesse Bruce Darius here. And them Game Boys with John Dean, Max, Eli, and Gil talking your video game news. Yeah. Uh, I want to start a podcast. Let's just start them all, said Ken. Yeah. Very they nice. all came out. Speaking nice. of that, yeah. uh, you can uh, check out Lunch Money Radio on Facebook and Pod, Podbean. Uh, that is uh, our little family of podcasts that we got going on. We have the $10 million burrito podcast. With me and Corey Williamson. Hey, buddy. Yes. Uh, we'll also have the Bumble Bitch podcast with me and my beautiful girlfriend, B. I look forward to that. It's I want to be, be a amazing. guest. I really that. feel it's, that. It's going to be amazing. Good. I want to be a guest. Uh, I'm not saying ours won't be, but it's it's. That, right. I look forward to that. Uh, cool. Also, uh, a couple quick shout outs to some fans and former panelists. Uh, you can also check out Rob Catlin and uh, uh, his friend Bubba on. Uh, it's going. It's hot. It's. Hot where we're going. Hot That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. Uh, they do a live podcast on Facebook every Thursday night. I thought they were joining the one. The one. Uh, the one. we're in discussions. Aha. Business. Uh, so also, uh, two, two go podcast right now. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't up to date. No, you're good. Uh, also, uh, go ahead and check out uh, the life of the anti adults. Uh, Linda Momsen's Facebook page. Uh, she's going to be doing amazing things this month. If you haven't checked her out yet, check her out. She's doing uh, 31 Days of Halloween. Yes. Uh, she's doing different uh, makeup uh, every day for the entire month of October. And uh, she does a wonderful job. It's amazing. So go you, check that out. You need she, a oh, makeup artist, a local makeup artist. She is the She will one. also be doing some makeup stuff for the Robros. Yes. So check us out. Uh, I'm going to volunteer my face. Yes. yes, and uh, <laughs> uh, check out the Geek Things podcast also, uh, Louis De Luna's podcast. Uh, he uh, co-hosts with me and Kian Yabanez. Uh, At on, the Takedown Breakdown. On the Takedown Breakdown. Uh, he is also the reigning defending uh, Row Bro world champion. Uh, and so that is it for the first round of the Tournament of Blood. I hope you guys have had fun. Uh, we just have a few episodes left till we get our grand champion. And then at the end of the episode, Jesse will probably just pour out his love for everyone because of this whole shenanigans. Yes. Aw, Jesse, you're so romantic. Uh, all right. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Bye.